Whew. That brings us to the end of our survey of nucleophilic acyl substitutions of carboxylic acid derivatives. And I'm not sure how you're feeling, but after going through all of those reactions, it feels like a lot. And so I wanted to return to this overview slide to give a couple of general comments about nucleophilic acyl substitution. Remember what we said at the beginning of this survey. We really want to think of nucleophilic acyl substitution as a general reaction type. Right, a general class of nucleophilic substitution reactions. Like any nucleophilic substitution reaction, it's going to involve a nucleophile, a leaving group, and an electrophilic carbon, and in acyl substitution, that carbon is always a carbonyl, and it's favorable when the nucleophile reactant is a better nucleophile than the leaving group product, right? So kicking off something like Cl- or carboxylate tends to be thermodynamically favorable with a wide variety of nucleophiles. On the other hand, kicking off NR2- as we would have to do to substitute an amide is much, much, much harder. And so, you know, in the overview here, starting with an acyl chloride, we can go down to almost anything. We can go to a carboxylic acid, anhydride, ester, amide. Right? And so if you want to make some carboxylic acid derivatives, starting with the corresponding acyl chloride is a good way to go. Uh, acid anhydrides are similarly very flexible. We can't make acyl chlorides from them, but we can make carboxylic acids, we can make esters, we can make amides, so on and so forth. We also saw how the nitrile is kind of a spiritual or honorary carboxylic acid derivative. The addition of water to a nitrile produces an amide, and then we're off to all the chemistry of amides from there. And nitriles can be conveniently made using SN2 reactions. They can also be reduced to amines in the exact same way that amides can be reduced to amines. So there's analogous reactivity there. Now, how do we get from the bottom of this sort of reactivity ladder back up to the top? Right? How do we even make acyl chlorides in the first place if, for example, all I've got to work with are amides or esters or carboxylic acids? Well, two important points to make. We actually saw, and didn't really point it out enough, but we saw a number of hydrolysis reactions that are all conceptually similar. Water is a nucleophile, and we often use either acid or base as a catalyst or promoter in this reaction. And hydrolysis, regardless of what carboxylic acid derivative we're dealing with, returns us to the carboxylic acid. And we can brute force it, because water is pretty much the cheapest nucleophile on planet Earth. So we can use it in huge excess, in solvent quantities. The acids or bases needed to, to um, accelerate these reactions are readily available and readily cheap. So we can force any carboxylic acid derivative, even an amide and even a nitrile, to the carboxylic acid, RCO2H. And then to climb the ladder, so to speak, climb the reactivity ladder, we can convert that carboxylic acid into an acyl chloride using SOCl2. So that's kind of a general two-step process to get back to a highly reactive state, regardless of which um, carboxylic acid derivative you're looking at, say I'm looking at an ester, I can hydrolyze that ester to a carboxylic acid, that's step one, and then use thionyl chloride to convert the carboxylic acid into an acyl chloride. So this is convenient for synthesis, right? It's, it provides sort of a roundabout way to get to any carboxylic acid derivative, no matter which um, carboxylic acid derivative functional group you start with. So again, to end this video, I'll just put out one last plea. Do not memorize these reactions. Instead, understand them as a general class of nucleophilic substitution reactions. Look for that nucleophile. Look for that leaving group. Ask yourself, is the nucleophile stronger than the leaving group that I'm asking this reaction to generate? Will it work as advertised, as I like to put it? Those kinds of questions are going to bear much more fruit than trying to memorize the specific structures of the reactants and products in each of these reactions.